one? What kind of an upgrade did you put into that artillery robot from Woodwow? Oh, no reason. I'm just currently trying not to die. Yeah, buddy, if you could work on the override, that would be great. I think our friends are supposed to be here in a second, and uh, I think there's some issues. everyone and welcome to Groove Builders, the show where we create together. I'm your host, the time-traveling model maker, Disorderly Cone, and uh, that over there is the Woodwow Artillery Robot. Just one second. In this episode, we're going to be telling you everything you need to know about this robot. Like, where are the complicated bits? Does it actually work when it's all put together? And how does that water actually mix with the electronics? These are all great questions, and uh, we're gonna get the answers. Uh, why don't you guys go down to the workbench where it's a little safer, and uh, I'll try to work things out here. And boom, there we have it. All of our pages needed to build the Wood Wow Artillery Robot. There's quite a lot here. And as you can see, it's been broken down to three different sections. The chariot, cannon, and controller. Each one of these books has a unique set of parts, so it's very important to make sure we stay organized. The first thing we're gonna take a look at is our chariot and go over some of those pesky details like those wheels. Next, we'll talk about our cannon and how to build that hopper that holds all those little gel balls. And finally, we'll touch on our controller and see if everything works together. This is definitely the most excited I've been for any wooden model in a long time, and I don't want to mess this up. Let's chat with our tool expert to see if he recommends anything for this project. Timothy? Finally, a wooden model fit for a Dalek? The Wood Wow Artillery Robot is a model that creates symbiosis between nature and machine. When its hopper is fully loaded, it will surely bring a smile to any Dalek <coughs> modeler's face. The tools you will need are tweezers, sandpaper, wax, and a hammer. Um, didn't this model come with a controller? Uh, the controller! Thanks, Timothy! I totally forgot about that! I think it's in one of my pockets here, but, uh... Oh, dang, these infinity pockets! As always, these are just our suggestions, and you really don't need anything but the tools that come inside of the Woodwow kit. But of course, having some tweezers and some extra wax around and sandpaper will make everything a lot easier for you. Okay, we've done our instructions and we have all our tools. There's only one thing left for you to do, is to press that like and subscribe button. I think if you did that, it might actually help me out with this situation. No pressure at all, though. No pressure. Yeah, yeah take, take your time. It's the red button and the thumbs up! Oh, thank you! <laughs> More ammunition. Okay, let's get down to the workbench and uh, actually build this thing. The Woodwow Artillery Robot is truly a unique wooden model. Not only do we have to contend with our typical wooden model problems like sanding our parts smooth and making sure not to press anything too hard, but we also have to be mindful of electronics and water. Typically, water makes wood swell and warp too. So how well will this work? Let's find out together. The first thing we need to do is build our chariot. We start off by building our bumpers. For the most part, this is pretty straightforward. There are only a few things to keep in mind on these couple of steps. One, all of our parts need to be properly sanded. The nubs left over from popping out our pieces will get in the way and stop our tank from working. And the second thing, when connecting our parts, they need to be fully seated in position. I know that that might sound like a no-brainer, but after building this model, I can't stress it enough. There were more than a few times where I thought things were fully together, but when I went to connect the next piece, I realized everything didn't line up. 
Step seven is a great example of this. We need to take our base here and fully seat it into our bumper. This can be hard because we have to juggle not crushing the wires while also pressing firm enough that the parts go together. When you first do this, it might look like you made a good connection, but when you compare it to the instructions, you realize it needs to be a lot further in. How can we do this? With our wooden mallet, of course. But before we go all smashy smashy, we need to think about what impact it will have on the wood. If you're worried about the marks being left, take a piece of sandpaper that was provided with the kit and place it on the desired smashing area. Make sure to have the sandpaper part up and then go to town. The other side of our sanding circle has Velcro on it, and that's actually a pretty good cushion for us to be able to hit our wood and not leave any marks. See, fully seated. Now we can add our electronics, our top, and now it's time to add our wheels. The wheels of our model are very interesting. Not only do they allow the robot to go back and forth, but they allow it to go in pretty much any direction. That's because instead of your traditional wheels, this guy here uses rollers, and these need to be assembled in a certain order for everything to work correctly. It's also important to recognize that when it comes to assembling this, the A and B wheels both have the rollers in different positions and installing the wheels on the right side is important to having your tank work properly too. The rollers require us to attach the housing first, making sure to line up our arrows and cross sections. When it comes to installing our eyelets, it's important to make sure that they're pressed in as far as they can go. And if you need to, go ahead and use that mallet to make it happen. Once all of our eyelets are installed, we can start placing our rollers. I found it easier to put one side in at a time, and if the rollers weren't moving freely afterwards, all I would do is push on those eyelets and it would free up. Okay, now we need to rinse and repeat for all four wheels. Boom, the power of YouTube magic, nice and easy. But now we need to move on to the trickiest part of the entire build, at least in my opinion, putting the wheels on to the chariot. The first time I tried to do this, it looked like the wheel was completely on, but it definitely wasn't. The axles need to go all the way through our wheel until those little clips meet the other side. I found that the best way to do this was to lie the robot on its side and press it into a table. If you're having trouble here like me, make sure to check out the full build video of our chariot. We go into way more detail there and we also build the whole thing together. And there we go, our chariot is all complete. And right now we could hook it up to our phone and play some really cool soccer games with it. But uh, we have some other things in mind. We need to attach our cannon. Let's go ahead and get onto that. Unlike our chariot, this modular cannon has a lot less pieces to put together. But I feel like if there's gonna be something that will go wrong, it will go wrong here. You see, this is where all the gel balls will get loaded and shot from. Not only do we need to make sure that all of our parts are well waxed, but that they're also fully together. Any excess water can and will wreak havoc on our robot. Getting into the build though, we start off with some pretty straightforward stuff, installing our motors and beginning our base. Pay extra close attention to the instructions here as I found it was kind of easy to install something wrong, especially with the motors. One thing to know is that this is a pre-release kit and because of that, the instructions might not be the final ones that you receive from WoodWow. I found that some of the parts in my instructions didn't really match up with the pieces. This did lead to some confusion, but nothing that we couldn't work out together. Where things get a little bit more interesting is the hopper area of our cannon. I found the wood here to be a little bit different than what we're used to. It feels a lot more waxier than what we're used to, which makes sense considering this is where all of that water ammunition is going to be stored. This area of our assembly has two springs that connect and push the wall. This wall keeps tension on our ammunition, allowing us to reload automatically by forcing the gel balls into place. Make sure to wax the rails and all the moving parts very well. We need the area to work like a well-oiled machine. Now we just need to add the last couple of pieces and move on to the almighty controller. Okay. This part of the build I had a lot of fun with. 
Unfortunately, I wasn't given the instructions on how to build this. So for the first half of this, I was really just trying to figure everything out. During the second half, I got my hands on a video that did help me complete it though. The reason why I say this is because again, what I have here is a pre-release model and when it officially releases, I'm sure there's going to be instructions and they might vary from the way that I do this on video. We start off our controller with the basic battery pack and controller grips. After making sure all of our pieces are in place, we need to add the electronics and start working on the bendable trigger parts. Everything was going pretty smooth up until I had to put the trigger buttons in place. Uh, why don't we watch that together? Huh? What? Oh, that's super annoying. Yeah, that was pretty difficult to watch, wasn't it? Things like this happen from time to time, and it does suck. But we don't let things like this get us down. No, 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 no. For problems like this, we have solutions. The almighty crackle. Some quick drops, making sure not to get the buttons, of course. A little bit of dry time, and everything is as good as new. The rest of our controller's construction is pretty straightforward, but we do need to make sure not to put too much pressure on any of the smaller details. The little clips that make up our little buttons are extremely fragile, and even just popping them out of their parts area can cause them to break. The best method I found to deal with connecting our button pieces all together was to use my table and mallet by using just the right amount of force and ensuring the pieces are properly lined up first. I got some really solid connections. Okay, let's add these last little bits together and see if this thing actually works. Okay, you're back. Uh, let me check my pockets again here. It's gotta be around here somewhere. No. Uh, ha! The controller! Okay. Ha uh, <laughs> ha, <laughs> it's down. All right, let's go take a look at this thing together. Ah, see, you're not so bad when you have an override. And there we have it. The Woodwow Artillery Robot and... Uh, controller. This model was a lot of fun to build, especially meshing the whole electronics and wood model together. Yes, we did have some difficulties with the wheels and of course putting together that pesky controller, but overall this model was so much fun. And now that it's all put together, being able to drive it and being able to of course play with it makes it so much better than your average wooden model that we've built from before. Yes, you know that I have a ton of fun with my wooden models, but this one, being able to have all these different abilities, I'm just really add something that, again, I think is so cool. And now that they have a Kickstarter with a whole bunch of other models on there, you better believe I'm going to be checking them out too. Thank you so much, Woodwow, for uh, sending me this. This was a lot of fun to put together, and it's unfortunate that the uh, little motor here on top doesn't work for the uh, shooting mechanism at the moment. That, I'm sure, is just a manufacturer's defect, and they were very willing to send me a new motor. It's just unfortunately, I wasn't able to get it in time for this review. But again, I highly recommend these kits, especially if you're a wooden model maker. And with that, Groovers, we're at the end of our show. I really had a good time building the Woodwow artillery robot and controller with you, and if you guys had a good time, don't forget to press that like button. For more videos like this, hit subscribe as well as we have all kinds of really cool models just like this coming out in the future and I would love to have you there. Until next time, keep building. Now, I'm going to go put you on the shelf where you can't harm anybody else.